What's up, lovely people? It's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cell injury, which is a reversible process. And we said that the most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia or anoxia, which means less tissue oxygenation. And in the last video, we talked about hypoxia in general and the famous causes of hypoxia. Please watch the previous video before this one. Today, we shall understand the difference between hypoxia and hypoxemia. What does hypo mean? Low, oxia, oxygen. How about hypo? Also low, oxy, oxygen, emia, blood. So here's your answer in a nutshell. Hypoxemia is a subtype of hypoxia. Put differently, every hypoxemia is a hypoxia, but not every hypoxia is a hypoxemia. Hypoxia could be hypoxemia or it could be something else. What do you mean by something else? The causes of hypoxia, as we have discussed in the last video, include ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin abnormalities. Let's say that I have hypotension and there is not enough blood reaching the kidney or reaching the lungs or reaching the liver, etc. That's called ischemia. It's not just hypotension. It could be a clot thrombus. What if the clot dislodges and goes somewhere else? Embolus. How about atherosclerosis? Fibromuscular dysplasia. All of these are ischemic causes of hypoxia. How about hypoxemia? What does that mean? hypoxemia, low oxygen in the blood. What do you mean? Low arterial blood oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood is low. Why is that? Could be a ventilation problem, a perfusion problem, or a diffusion problem. Next, what's the name of the vehicle, the car, that carries oxygen molecules in the blood? It's called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin abnormalities will make me unable to carry oxygen to the specific tissue, i.e. hypoxia. Let's review what we have said before. Tissue hypoxia, what's the definition of hypoxia? Inadequate tissue oxygenation. The tissue is not getting enough oxygen. What is anoxia? An means no. This is no oxygen going to the tissue. Not just less oxygen, no oxygen. Anytime I have less or no oxygen going to the tissue, it means there is less oxygen available in the mitochondrial electron transport chain, which means I will be unable to make ATP synthesis because it's the purpose of the electron transport chain to make some ATP via ATP synthase enzyme. But this is not gonna happen right here. That's why hypoxia is dangerous because if you have hypoxia, you have no energy which means you decreased your chances of survival. Causes of hypoxia, as we have discussed in the last video, ischemia, hypoxemia, hemoglobin abnormalities, problem in the vessel or the blood going to the organ, problem in the arterial oxygen partial pressure, or a problem in the hemoglobin, the car that carries oxygen. This is just one classification. There is another classification, hypoperfusion hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, and cytotoxic hypoxia. And this shall be the topic of the next video. Let's review tissue hypoxia again. Whose job is to bring oxygen to your body? Well, it's the lung's job, but then who's gonna distribute that oxygen? The heart. And what are the causes of hypoxemia, i.e. low oxygen in the arterial blood? Could be a ventilation defect diffusion defect or perfusion defect. This is just an alveolus of your lung. Normally, the oxygen should go from my lung to my blood in the pulmonary artery, for example. How does oxygen jump from here to here? It's called diffusion. So if I have a problem here in ventilation or a problem in diffusion or a problem in perfusion, the end result is that I will have less oxygen in the arterial blood. Translation, my P, small a, O2 is low. What do you call that? Hypoxemia. Is this a cause of hypoxia? Yes, indeed. So causes of ischemia include ventilation defect, diffusion defect, perfusion defect. Give me one example of ventilation defect. Let's say I'm breathing less often. My respiratory rate is low. Instead of breathing 12 times per minute, I'm only breathing six times per minute. I am hypoventilating. This can be seen in morbid obesity. And it's not just about the rate, but the depth of each breath. How about some morphine intoxication? This will suppress 
the brain stem, the respiratory center, which tells my lung to breathe less. Can you give me an example of a diffusion defect? Yes. Imagine that this lovely interstitial tissue has been replaced with thick fibrous tissue, pulmonary fibrosis. Oops, that's not gonna work. The oxygen will not be able to diffuse to the arterial blood. How about a perfusion defect? Imagine that I have a pulmonary embolus right here. Oh, I got you. So even if the oxygen diffuses, it will not be able to flow and go to other tissues. Let me help you by answering the questions from the previous video. If I have cyanide poisoning, what's gonna happen to my oxygen content, hemoglobin concentration, the P small AO2, which is the arterial oxygen, and what's gonna happen to the oxygen that's bound to the hemoglobin, i.e. the saturation. Please pause and try to answer it yourself. Answer. Cyanide is a mitochondrial poison. It inhibits cytochrome C. Cyanide does not affect hemoglobin concentration. It does not change the PaO2 or the SaO2, which means the oxygen content stays the same. But would you consider cyanide poisoning a cause of hypoxia? Yes, because your cell cannot utilize the oxygen because the electron transport chain of the mitochondria has been roasted and toasted. What's the difference between a patient who does not have oxygen and a patient who does have oxygen but cannot utilize it? Both are pointless. Both have hypoxia. Coming up next, in cases of polycythemia, what's gonna happen to the oxygen content, hemoglobin concentration, P small AO2 and SAO2, please pause. Polycythemia, tons of red blood cells. If I have tons of red blood cells, I'll have more hemoglobin in my body. But what's gonna happen to the free oxygen in the arterial blood? No change. How about the number of oxygen molecules on the hemoglobin or how much oxygen is on the hemoglobin? No change. Therefore, if this goes up, what's going to happen to the oxygen content? It's going to go up. Anytime oxygen content goes up, what's going to happen to erythropoietin? In response, it will have to go down. As long as this polycythemia was not caused by the erythropoietin. So this case right here is talking about a patient with polycythemia vera, for example. Hemoglobin concentration went up because the bone marrow is crazy and making too many red blood cells. As a result, oxygen content went up. As a result, EPA went down. Coming up next, high altitude sickness. What's going to happen to these parameters? Please pause. Let's think about that. Well, at high altitudes, there is less oxygen, right? Because the pressure goes down, so the pressure of gases goes down. So PaO2 goes down. Anytime PaO2 goes down, SaO2 goes down. So oxygen content will go down. How about hemoglobin concentration? In the beginning, there is no change. But if I've been living on top of a mountain for months and months and months and years and years and years, my EPA will go up and my hemoglobin concentration will go up. But overall, the oxygen content is usually lower. Later, because of this response, it might normalize. Don't forget to show hypoxia is caused by ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin anomalies. And the hypoxia types are many, and that will be the topic of the next video. Pause and review. Do you want to learn about acute respiratory distress syndrome? How about cases of drowning? How about hypothermia? How about arrhythmias, myocardial infarction, angina, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke? You can learn about all of these topics by downloading my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.